Well, I can tell you, I'm certainly not missing the the hard fitness sessions that we do around this time of year, and uh, talking to a few of the lads, they're as hard, if not harder than ever. So, uh, from that respect, I'm not quite missing it yet. But um, but I'm sure when the matches start again and things get up and going, I'm sure there'll be a a little tear in the corner of my eye at some stage. But um, I'm not going to hang around to wait and see anyway. Going back to the very beginning, Frankie, how did you get involved with rugby first day? Ah, uh, there was a friend of mine, uh, uh, Jar Cusson from. Uh, Shanaquil, he was going to um, down to Cork Con and uh, I'd played nearly every other sport except rugby and he just said come on away down there one morning and uh, myself and Jor and uh, another for the Jor Kirstein we, we, we got in the car and uh, I suppose the first day I, I played I was sort of that bit better at that sport than I was at other sports and um, I made the first team and uh, you know I suppose the rest is history really and you know lucky enough then to go to a good um, rugby school like Prez and um, Brilliant nursery for for any rugby player, really, and uh, it just it just went from there, really. You, your career, I suppose, with Munster spanned both the amateur and the professional side of things. Is there a massive difference between the two when you look back on it? Yeah, I suppose when you compare when I first started to what it is now, it's phenomenal difference. And you know, I suppose guys like you know the work that guys like Declan Kidney did is just amazing. And 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 looking at the difference in the whole thing from I suppose. When we when I was first involved, we trained Tuesday and Thursday nights at Munster. Um, it's uh, there was a coach, and there was a manager, there was five selectors, you know. So it was really comparing to now. You I mean you have a, a management team of up to twenty twenty five um, in the management team, and the squads are including academies and stuff. You're talking forty forty five people. So it's it's huge. It's a completely professional setup, and uh, and massive massive changes. And I suppose that's you know it's brought a lot of good things to professional rugby. Was it difficult to adjust to that, or was it something that happened over a gradual space of time? Yeah, it, it it evolved really, and everybody else was in the same boat. And we're still, you know, teams are still learning, uh, learning a lot. Now, from the rugby league has been um, professional for a long, long time, so we're still learning from them in various aspects, and um, and it will, it'll continue to evolve as the years go by. Your first team monster debut came against the Western Samoa in, I think it was November 1996. Do you remember much about that day and how you were feeling ahead of the game? Yeah, I think we just, uh, I sat on the bench the previous week against Toulouse and we took an almighty hammering by 60 points to 20. And uh, they rested a lot of the first team players, so Terry Kingston got a break and I got in and I was, you know, delighted to get a start. Um, from what I remember of it, we, we, rattled, uh, we rattled their cages, all right, there was... Uh, they had uh, the big guy Twigamala was playing at the time, and they had to bring him on with about 15 minutes to go to get them out of trouble. We were so, we were sort of setting up a few rolling malls that didn't really suit them, and they had Trevor Leota, the, the the big hooker who played at Wasps against Munster in the Heineken Cup that time, and he was playing, and he spear tackled Pat Murray, who was our captain that day, and ended up getting sent off. So, but it was a great day. I mean, um, I think Alan Quinlan was playing the same day, Alton O'Callaghan, and. You know, you guys like Ian Murray, uh, Paul McCarthy, Paco Fitzgerald, and all these sort of legends. But it was a great day, and and it was a lovely day. Actually, we lost the game, I think, 35 25, um, but we kind of got the respect, and I suppose the following week, then they actually played against Ireland and gave Ireland a good beating the following week, so it looked fairly good in us then after that. What sort of a crowd was in Musgrave Park this day, that day, considering when you look at last week's friendly against London Irish and there was over 7,000 there? Yeah, I think there was two. I think, I'm just guessing, no, there was a couple of thousand, I'd say, anyway, which in fairness was a good crowd. I think uh, it was a lovely day as well and the whole lot. But, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the work that, that's been done there for Munster, I think uh, I was talking to Glyn Billinghurst the other day and he, you know, he's doing Trojan work there with regard to, I think for the two friendlies, they were hoping to get 10,000 people in and they ended up getting something like 13, 13 and a half thousand, which is phenomenal, you know, and... and and the Cork people coming out, and indeed everybody else, uh, you know, from places like Kerry and and Waterford and all that, it, it, it's it's just really impressive to see for friendlies like that that the crowds that we're getting. I suppose again that goes back to the Munster brand and how much it's grown since the turn of the century, really. Yeah, it has, and uh, the Heineken Cup really helped this uh, evolve. Um, Tommy Kiernan was instrumental in other Cork men in getting that going. Uh, uh, Tommy got this Heineken Cup going, and all of a sudden, I suppose. Um, you know, with respect to the GA and everything, you know, we, people were able to follow their t their local team into Europe and actually contend with some of the best teams in France and England and Wales and um, and actually go out and we finally ended up winning something out there, you know. And uh, um, I suppose when I grew up, it was all Liverpool jerseys and Man United jerseys and all this. Now it's 
there's so many rugby jerseys out there it's, it's, it's incredible and and you know it's an awful lot of thanks to the Heineken Cup as well It must have been exciting though to be a part of that and to, to watch something grow the way Monster has done Yeah it, it was what a journey it was really exciting and there was ups and downs and turnarounds and the whole lot I, I, I think I had a taste of every single emotion over the years um, you know I was went from you know being second choice, the first choice, the second choice, and you know it, it, they're all the little bits that go with it. And but to be part of the brand, I suppose, it, yeah, it w- was really, you know, flattering and and you know to to have helped in in some way to to um, you know achieve what Munster did achieve is you know it's great, and I you know count myself as extremely lucky to have done that. Munster finally reached the Heineken Cup final in 2000, but went on to to lose out to Northampton on the day. How did that much did that spur you all on to kind of go back and to really give you the hunger for it? Yeah, it spurred us on definitely. It was just gutting. I think you know if we'd played Northampton ten times, I think we probably would have won nine times. You know, it was just one of those days. And and good luck to Northampton. They they, they beat us and obviously losing again then in two thousand and two was uh, an equal sickener. You know, but um, I I do feel that they have stood to us and. I think every final we've played since we've won, you know, we've been involved in Celtic Cup finals, Celtic League finals, and uh, two Heineken Cup finals, and we've won. And I think that's the reason for it because we lost, we def- we lost the finals, and it it does make you stronger. How tough was it in 2006 to be in Cardiff and not to be a part of the the squad because of injury? Yeah, it was it was, but it was just it was just a relief outside of anything. I mean, uh, if we had lost that day, I, I I don't think I could have faced into 2007. Having lost three finals, you know, so the, it was it was just a huge pressure cooker, and you know, it was it was it was gutting. Like, but at the end of the day, you know, we won, and that was the main thing. And the, you know, it's not about me; it's about the team, and that's it. You know, so and I was delighted, and I suppose I I played in the first game of the campaign, so I suppose there was some peace of mind to know that I was going to get a medal at least, anyway. So uh, even whether I deserved it or not, I got one anyway. But um, so yeah, I mean, it was. Um, Great day, a great occasion and, 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 and a brilliant win.